So in this video, we're going to look at analytical writing. And we're going to do that by reading through and breaking down a passage from our Norton Field Guide called Fashion Industry. Now, this is one of my favorite pieces to look at with students. And if you've never heard of the author here, Hannah Berry, no surprise there. Because Hannah Berry, actually, was writing this as a student, just like you. She was a freshman student at Wright State University in 2011. And like many of the pieces in our field guide, the editors collected hers as a sample of great student writing and included it. And what she's doing is she is analyzing two different texts and comparing them in this essay. And by texts, I mean something very particular. And if you have your field guide already, you can look at uh, the page just before the fashion industry essay, and they really talk about this idea. But if you don't have it yet, let me explain some of what we're, what we're getting at here. So according to the Norton Field Guide, quote, text is commonly thought of as words as a piece of writing, and that may be what your first association naturally is. However, in the academic world, text the word text can include not only writing, but images, photographs, illustrations, videos, films, even sculptures. So text has a much different, broader meaning in academic discourse than simply basic writing. So for our purposes, we can talk about a text as anything that conveys ideas or attempts to influence its audience. And so with Barry, her texts are two advertisements, and in analyzing these two ads, she found a common theme. So that's what we're going to look at is her essay on that. And I want to look first at what does it mean to analyze a text. So it's good to know the word analysis itself comes from roots all the way back to ancient Greek, meaning to cut, to loosen, to break apart. So when we analyze, we are studying how a text works by cutting it into little pieces and studying all the moving parts. So we're breaking it down. And the way I like to describe analysis to my students to, to, to try to help them make sure that they feel like they're doing it right is it's really two steps. First, you have to identify what is happening in the text. What is the text doing? So what do you see? And then why is that important? What's it doing and why? So another way of writing about this is to say, what's happening in the text? These are the text features, features of the text itself, things, the moving parts, you know, the parts that we're going to break down when we cut it up. And then once we've cut it into pieces, we're going to study what do those pieces do and what effects are they creating? So if we were analyzing something in biology, if we were dissecting an animal, we would identify an organ and say, okay, what is that organ's function? What is its effect on the organism as a whole? So that's how I think we should think about analysis is what's happening, the what, and why is it important, the why. So now how is Barry going to do this in her essay? Well, let's look at her structure a little bit. She uses, I think, a very straightforward structure. Now, by now, you've probably watched some of my other videos breaking down some of our introductory sample texts, and we've talked about different structural choices. Barry, though, as a student author, chooses a very straightforward structure. She has an introduction where she introduces the ads and the common theme she seems at work, sees at work in them, and that's her thesis. So typical student essay structure where your introduction leads to the last sentence is your thesis statement, your main point that you're going to make in the essay. So very conventional, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's, it's conventional structure because it's very effective and it's very clear. And then from there, she follows the process of analysis very much in the way that I just described it to you. She says, what's happening in the text? So her second section is she describes the first ad with its text features, and then she analyzes it. And she talks about how those text features, how the imagery in the ad itself develops this theme. So she does that for the first ad, and then she repeats it for the second ad, describes it, analyzes it. And then she has a conclusion where she strengthens her thesis and draws her final conclusion about how these ads reflect this theme. So it's a very straightforward structure, 
but uh, I think very effective. And I, like I said, I think there's a good uh, essay for us to look to as a model for your uh, writing, especially your analytical writing coming up. So let's get into this essay of hers and read through it and break it down a little bit as we go. As young women, we have always been told through the medium of advertisement that we must use certain products to make ourselves beautiful. For decades, ads for things like soap, makeup, and mouthwash have established a sort of misplaced control over our lives, telling us what will make us attractive and what will not. Recently, however, a new generation of advertisement has emerged in the fashion industry, one that cleverly equates the products shown in the ads with the quest for confident individuality. Ads such as the two for Clarks and Sorrel discussed below encourage us to break free from the standard beauty mold and be ourselves. Using mostly imagery, they remind us that being unique is the true origin of beauty. So here's her introduction. And you can see she starts broadly with kind of the importance of the issue. Okay, why am I talking about these ads? Why am I talking about this theme? Well, this is the context. This is the social context. You know, the expectations that advertising and um, notions of beauty put on young women. And so that's the context that leads us to this thesis of mine where I'm going to take these two ads and analyze them and say they're saying something different about beauty. They're saying this. So you can see how that is analytical. She breaks it apart and de derives an effect from it. Now, this essay is an analysis essay, but I also want you looking out for elements of evaluation. And remember, evaluation is when the author renders a judgment on something and they pass judgment. Uh, so evaluations are really reviews, but you find that these genres mix a lot, right? And so there are some notes of evaluation in here. Let's go on to the second paragraph. And here is, by the way, a reproduction of the ad in question. So we saw in the outline that she's going to describe this first ad. The first ad promotes Clark's fashion as band geek chic quite literally raising a unique personality onto a pedestal, with the subject poised on a decorative stone platform as shown in figure one. Photographed and standing profile, this quirky looking young woman is doing what she loves, playing some kind of trumpet, and looks great doing it. She is wearing her hair in a French twist with a strand tucked behind her ear as if she recently moved it out of her face to play the music she loves without distraction. The downturn of her nose points to the short gray black dress that stops several inches above her knees, but covers her chest and shoulders modestly, with a collar situated at the base of her neck and sleeves that reach for her elbows. The dress is plain, but is a perfect fit for the personality implied in the photo. Set against the background of a light tan wall, the model leans back slightly as if supporting the weight of her instrument. Her right knee is bent while her left knee remains straight. The positioning of her legs not only accentuates her unbalanced posture, but also points out the pair of simple brown pumps that complete the look. She wears the shoes with a pair of socks in a much darker shade of brown pulled up around her shins. Around her ankles are sandy colored rings of shaggy fabric that are most likely attached to the socks, giving the whole outfit a sense of nerdy flair. Her expression is a simple mix of calm and concentration. It's as if the photographer happened to take a picture while she was practicing for a school recital. All right, so we can agree that this paragraph is mostly descriptive, as our outline already kind of hinted it would be. And by the way, if you are following along in the field guide and not the online version, which um, you should be following along, you notice that in the margins they do note all of this, that this is what she's doing as she's uh, dis giving a detailed description of the text. Now, I would argue, though, that there are some moves that go beyond just description in this paragraph, that she is including some analytical moves and some evaluation moves in here as well. Um, and sometimes they're kind of mixed very closely together. You know, when she says she's quirky looking, uh, that's kind of analyzing the overall effect of the image. It's like, yeah, she's it's giving this quirky edge. So that's analysis. Um, and when she says a sense of nerdy flair, that's kind of an analytical too. But both of those are also somewhat evaluative too. And we can really see that she, our author Hannah Berry, seems to think that these are positive qualities. Um, and she seems to really like this ad from her word choice 
and the way that she's describing it. So even though this is most, mostly description, there's hints of other kinds of moves in there. And I think that's appropriate, especially the analysis. One thing I always say about analysis is that analysis is the bedrock of analytical writing. If we're, uh, I'm sorry, of course, of academic writing, sorry, of academic writing. If we are writing academically, we want to see that analytical thinking, that careful analytical thinking throughout. So it's appropriate that her descriptive paragraph has some notes of analysis in here as well. But let's move on to the next section where we know from our breakdown of the outline and the notes that our field guide editors have given us in the margins that she's really going to get into the, the nuts and bolts of analysis here. Clarks has taken what looks like your average high school student and dressed her in an outfit that speaks to her own distinctive character and talents. The image, is spark the image sparks the idea that her beauty comes from an internal base of secure self-confidence and moves outward to infuse her physical appearance and sense of style. This ad urges us to celebrate individuality with the right look. Using an image alone, Clark advertises this product with a simple promise that it will support you in doing what you love and keep you original. So here again, she's describing how the imagery that she already took, that took us through, how that imagery is developing this theme of individuality. Okay, so this is really the meat of her analysis because she's looking at the text features, all that description of the ad, and she's saying the effect is this theme, this message about self-confidence and individuality and beauty, this is the point. So that's her analytical conclusion about the first ad. Now, next paragraph is gonna take us through her second ad, which you can see a portion of it reproduced there. The, the ad was actually a little bit more full page than that, as you'll see in the field guide itself. So she's gonna describe it. Taking a narrower perspective on originality, the ad for Sorrel Boots, shown in figure two, dramatizes the idea that spontaneity is key to a distinctive personal identity. This abstract idea is depicted in a vividly concrete way, using the featured fur top boots as a base for encouraging a bold sense of self. The ad dares us to break free from the mold of society and do something fearless. It shows us a dark-haired, red-lipped woman sitting in a formal French upholstered chair in a dark blue, elaborately paneled parlor. An expression of triumph and mischief adorns her sultry visage. Okay. She may be going a little far with the vocabulary on that line, Hannah. Huh? All right. She's wearing a revealing short white dress that overlaps slightly around her chest and falls strategically over her hips so that large portions of her upper thighs are visible. Feathers and autumn colors cover her shoulders and a gold belt accentuates her waist. Next to her is a polished wood table supporting a lighted candle, a small glass vase of pink and white flowers, and a black and white patterned orb. There is a dormant ornate fireplace to her left, but what makes this scene extraordinary is what seems to have taken place moments before the picture was taken. One of the young woman's feet, clad in the devil red black laced boots being advertised, rests defiantly on top of a shattered remnants of a crystal chandelier. In her right hand, the woman holds an old looking shotgun with her forefinger still resting on the trigger. All right, so again, the main purpose of this paragraph, as we talked about, is the detailed description of this second ad. However, I think we see a lot more, both evaluative and analytical work, as she's presenting this image. I mean, just the way she opens it, she frames it in terms of the theme very explicitly at the beginning. Uh, and talks about the abstract idea about spontaneity. She also does some contrasting work, and contrast is an analytical move. When you're contrasting the thinking behind two things, that's analytical thinking right there. And so she's noting that this ad, though they both have similar themes, does take a different perspective on originality and introduces the more particular idea of spontaneity. So she does a lot of analytical thinking in this paragraph, even as she's mostly presenting us with the imagery. And even as she's presenting the imagery, she's making judgments there as well. Because down toward the bottom, she says, what makes this scene extraordinary is what took place moments before. So she's making those judgments and making those analytical moves as well. And all this is prelude to the next section where she really develops how this works as a theme. So this is where she's really doing the analysis. In Sorrel's explosive ad, it is apparent that the woman not only shot down the ceiling fixture, but also has no regrets about doing it. 
Her white dress represents a sort of purity and innocence that is completely contradicted by the way she wears it and by the boots. They gave her the power to shoot down the chandelier to push the push she needed to give in to the long-held desire that perhaps she couldn't have indulged in without the extra help. They symbolize her liberty to decide to be herself and do what she wants. Along with the white dress, the formal decor represents the bounds that society tells her she must fit into, but that she decides to take a pot shot at instead. Focusing on the beauty of inner power, not just the power of outer beauty, this sorrel ad punctuates its bold visual statement with a single verbal phrase, après every, anything. In the French language, the word après means after, so the ad suggests no matter what outrageous or outlandish deed you do, the sorrel boots will be there for you, suitable for slipping into afterwards like a negligee. All right, so I think Hannah Berry's work on the first ad was good, but here she's really getting into the meat of analysis. Uh, and you know, I mentioned a second ago, if you're contrasting, you're analyzing, but it's a very basic analytical move. If you're getting into symbolism, that's some deeper analysis, right? And look at the really sharp things she's saying about symbolism here. You know, how the way that the decor and the dress symbolize society's bounds versus her bold statement and how the, the boots, the focus of the ad, fit into all of this. So some really sharp analysis going on here. And this is why I say that I really think this is a great student sample for freshman writers, uh, introductory writers in a class like this to really learn from. Because I think she does a great job of really getting deep. And that's as we talk about analysis, you'll hear me talk about depth all the time because there are levels of analysis, you know, even if we just compare the analysis between the two ads. The first one was okay, but she's definitely getting deeper beneath the surface of this ad and really taking it apart and really finding the function of these parts, you know, really looking at these individual visual elements uh, and, and analyzing what they mean to the overall composition and its message, its theme. So, like I said, Barry's essay is a great example. Um, we're not quite done, though, because she does wrap it all up with a conclusion. With these pioneering fashion ads that celebrate blowing your own horn or shooting up fancy French lighting fixtures for fun, young women are told to accessorize their inner beauty with articles of clothing geared towards their distinctive individual desires. You don't have to just try to be beautiful in ways other women do, they say. You can strike out on your own and our products will help you do it. The extent to which women will respond to these messages remains to be seen, but certainly the ads themselves achieve a strikingly different look. Whether celebrating individual talents or random acts of defiance in our everyday lives, they dare us to accessorize our personalities. So, like I said, a real good way to wrap up the themes that she's uh, brought out in these two ads. And you can see how she really takes those ads apart to wring out the analytical uh, meaning of the depth there. So uh, that's why I say it's such a great example of analytical writing for us to learn from. And one that you'll catch me referring back to a lot when we get to your own analytical work, uh, and especially your big analysis essay at the end of the semester. So uh, that's about that for this video, and uh, everyone have a good day.